3D Garfield and Odie Acrylic Nailer Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi everyone! In today's video I'm going to be doing a two-part nail design for Garfield and Odie. So on the first nail there's going to be a three-dimensional Garfield looking oh so disgusted at the fact that Odie on the other nail has his tongue out and he's drooling just the slightest bit. Garfield and Odie really describes my relationship with a couple of my nephews so well. It's kind of funny. I am definitely Garfield. I could sit and eat lasagna and my nephews are all over the place drooling on stuff. It's like a parallel universe. So I hope you like this design and don't forget to click subscribe to my future videos as well. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is creating my background color. And so I'm doing this. It looks so much bluer in the video than it does in real life. This acrylic, I don't know why. It's really a gorgeous teal. And I thought that I always like to pair my backgrounds with a color opposite of the 3D work. So because Garfield is orange, I want to do something that's kind of in the blue to teal range because that's really going to brighten him. And Odie's yellow, so, you know, I don't know, it's not the opposite there, but it's still, they're not very close color, so it's still going to contrast really well. So I'm going to be adding a layer of clear acrylic over the top of that teal, even though it looks blue, and that's going to provide a lot of strength. Plus, if you use a thin layer of the clear acrylic, then you're not wasting as much of the more expensive product, if that makes sense, because I know I always get a, a bigger jar of clear acrylic just because I go through so much, and it's a lot cheaper that way, so... Yeah, so I'm going to be filing it with a 180 grit file, and this I'm doing on this for both of the nails. I'm doing the same blue and clear and filing, and then buff it with a 240 grit buffer. And now I'm going to start sculpting out my Garfield. And so I'm going to begin with orange acrylic and start working on his head. And in the beginning there, I was using my 3D brush, and I decided what was I doing that was going to take an eon to get it sculpted out because it's a larger space. So I switched to my other bigger brush. I'm going to give him a nice oval head. And now I'm going to start working on his body. And I don't know if, if you're familiar with my videos, you know that normally I'd put a layer of gel sealer behind the 3D stuff and then start doing the 3D on top of it. I did not do that, however, this time because I Garfield has these whiskers that kind of come up by his eyes and go into the background. And so if you were to do that, then those whiskers would be without any product protecting them from being washed away. So if you do... So you have to put another layer of gel sealer on it again later on. So if you do the gel sealer afterwards, then you can include those whiskers and there's no issue there. So sorry, I missed a little bit of this, but I'm going to be adding his ears now. So just lay down an ear, get it into the right shape. And then as it's starting to set, so it's just beginning to turn matte, poke your brush in wait where the indent and the inside of the ear would be to give it that distinct cat-like shape there just like that. And the ear that's on, well, in the video, it looks like it's on the right. That ear is going to be slightly smaller than the other one since it's behind it. And so now I'm going to be adding his eyes. And for these two beads, they only have to be, you have to pay attention mostly to the width of them, not necessarily the height, because the height of his eyes will come a lot more with the eyelids, which I'm going to add in a second with more orange, as you can see. So I'm you can make the eyes, the white part of the eye, all the way up to the top of where his eye would be. You don't have to. If you do, then you just want to make sure that it's thin enough that once you start adding the eyelid on there, it doesn't look crazy thick. So I just... And that's also kind of a funny or a, an easier thing because you don't have to worry about how big those beads of white are. I mean, you don't obviously want them to be ginormous or really, really small, but you have a lot more freedom to have them be... You don't have to worry if they're a little too big or a little too small because you're covering up most of it anyway that it doesn't really matter. So then I added both of his eyelids, making sure that as you're doing this, you keep them nice and separated so they don't become one blob. They have, it looks like two distinct shapes. And so now with yellow, I'm going to be adding his little kitten cheeks. Oh, Garfield would be so mad to hear someone call him kitten cheeks, but add, <laughs> add his cheeks with yellow and kind of a grouchy, frowny downward shape. And like I said with my nephews, like I am so Garfield, I give them that disgusted face all the time. One of my one of my nephews who's 10, he constantly is slobbering on stuff. I don't know what it is. And I can't I can't help giving him a disgusted look whenever he's yeah, boys, what can you say? So then I'm going to go through and I'm going to be adding his folded arms. So I'm going to start with the one arm and just this is a little awkward because arm when you fold your arms they're sort of intertwined with each other so to sculpt them with them going over and under and through it's a little strange so just do what you can and kind of go back and forth between doing one arm and then the other and 
back and forth and back and forth until you have the right shape. And keep in mind that at any time when you're doing a 3D thing, if you feel that this is not going the way you want, you just want to scrap it and start over. If it's not fully dry, you can take like a cuticle pusher and just slide it right off and try it again, which is kind of a fun thing to do. I mean, if you're like, hey, this sucks, get rid of it. You have that freedom. And I know I've done that on occasion just because something is not going as planned. So you can do that. And so, yeah, or if it is dry and you decide later on that it's not good and you can't slide it off like you could before, you can always file it and 3D stuff because it's generally, it's thick sometimes, but it's not always a huge amount of space. It doesn't take all of that much filing to get rid of something that's gone wrong. And then also add just a little pink bead between his eyes on his cat cheeks for his nose. So now with black, I'm going to be doing a lot of outlining here because Garfield is newer newer cartoons and animation have very few outlines anything that's say 10 years or older is going to have a lot more a lot more outlines a lot more definition in that respect and so and it's going to be appear a lot flatter instead of today's animation has it's almost realistic looking but because garfield is an older character i am so happy to be able to do these outlines because i think they look so cool and it makes it's 2d and 3d all kind of wrapped up in one because it looks more 2d with all the outlines so i don't know i enjoy this but i'm just going to go through and add all of his outlines and make sure that i give him his little tabby stripes on the sides of his head and down his back just like that so it's a whole bunch of little lines that get smaller and smaller as they get towards the center of his face so there and i'm going to outline his arms and i also when you're doing this you want to make sure that you give him a couple little polka dots on the yellow for whisker holes and you also want to make sure that you give him a pupil add those extra stripes just like that and then as i said apply gel sealer making sure you cover up those whiskers and that entire uh, blue background because you don't want those whiskers to wash off as you're moving around your life and then cure that and then i'm going to be applying a matte top coat over the rest of garfield so now to start Odie, I'm going to begin with yellow, and the yellow that I'm using is more of a really sunny, bright yellow. However, sometimes when you look at Garfield and Odie, it depends on the image. Sometimes it looks like it's a little more pastel, and if that's the case, go ahead and use a pastel yellow. I don't own a pastel yellow acrylic, so I figured bright was going to be the way it was going to go, and I was fine with that. So you can use whatever color you want, and same thing with the yellow that is on Garfield's cheeks too. If you want to use a pastel yellow and you think that that's closer to what you are familiar with with this particular Garfield, then go ahead and switch that up. So the first thing I did was on my Odie is that part of his face that's more like his nose and his jaw, but then it's got that huge long because his mouth is so open. So that comes down a long ways and it's a really skinny bit of yellow acrylic. So as you can see, I did that in a couple different beads, doing them back and forth and back and forth, bringing them down. To do that and the same thing with the reason i did not apply gel sealer in the background is because i knew that i was going to add that drool drip off of his tongue and i did that with paint i didn't do that with acrylic and since i don't know exactly where his tongue is going to end up i don't have that much planning done here you never really know sometimes things change i couldn't paint that in advance and then put the gel sealer down and sculpting on top of gel sealer has a different feel than sculpting on top of a matte nail on gel sealer as soon as you put the bead down it spreads and it gets quite flat and you have to let it set for a second and then push it back in when you have when you're doing it against a flat background that might have a slight texture from a file it's going to not do that it's going to stick in its place and it's going to it feels different so if you're not comfortable working on gel sealer know that in any of my designs you don't have to you can always add the gel sealer later on or if in this case you are more comfortable working with gel sealer you can do that and then just apply a second coat so now with white acrylic, I'm going to add his eyes and his eyes set right on top of that first oval that we add. So there's an oval that is more, is wider than it is tall for the first part of his mouth. And then his head is kind of behind that. And that's an oval that's taller than it is wide. And they're both on just a slight angle. So you want to set his eyeballs on that first oval, just like they're sitting, sitting right on that. And then I'm going to be with brown, adding his ears that are sort of really perked up. Like he's listening for something like, I don't know, maybe he heard there's snacks coming. I know I always get really excited when somebody mentions snacks. Maybe he does too. So I'm just going to add his ears like he, he's really listening. So they're up above his eyes. So add the thicker part of his ear is going to be the part that's um, horizontal. And the part that curves down and kind of tucks behind his eyes, that part's going to be a lot thinner. Just like that. 
I'm just going to touch them up again, making sure that the one that is forward definitely looks like it's thicker and ahead of the one that's behind. So now with red acrylic, I'm going to be adding his tongue. So I'm just going to set that bead down and then I'm just going to press it and pull it into that nice curved shape like so. And then I'm going to press up just a little bit and create that indent for the shape of the split in the tongue and then add a black bead for his nose just like that and now switching to acrylic paint I'm going to go through and add all of those black details and outlines just like we did with Garfield so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in behind his mouth because he's got his mouth is open so you can see a little bit inside of his mouth but just appear um, that part just appears black but I'm going to add all the rest of the outlines on him making sure I add a little tail because his tail is just a black line like how Garfield's whiskers are outline his legs a little bit couple wrinkles on his back like that create a nice little smile for him because he's happy Garfield might not be happy but he's having a ball make sure I separate his eyes and if you need to if your black paint seems like it's a little too thick and these lines aren't coming out like you wanted them to they seem like they're way too thick or if you're having any sort of problem try diluting it just a little bit so well, the way I like to dilute my paint is I get a bigger bit of paint on my brush and then I dip that into water and then I mix it on my thumb I find I have the most control that way and I know what's happening so then I'm going to add a gray spot on his hip and then also I'm going to use gray to add that little drool drip and then going back to black I'm going to outline the drool and so now I'm going to be applying a layer of gel sealer on the background over his tail and over that drip a drool. Drip a drool, say that 10 times real fast. And there you go. And then after that's cured, I'm going to apply matte top coat over the rest of Odie. And that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you like this design and enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!